Hey guys, Andy here, and today I want to talk to you about something very serious. Due to the serious nature of this video, I'm not going to be doing my usual youtube shtick. I'm just going to keep it as serious as possible, out of respect for the sailors involved as well as their families. Today I'm going to be talking to you about what's been going on with the USS Fitzgerald DG-62. So we're going to be looking at four articles from the official American Navy website. If you're looking at stuff like this, I highly recommend going to the official site versus third-party sources. So that way you get the true, honest-to-goodness information. So I'm also going to have links in the description for these articles so you can look over them on your own time as well. But we're just going to be looking over these and then I'm going to be giving my own thoughts as to uh, where we go from here. What, what have we learned from this, uh, this horrific accident. For those who don't know who I am and are just stumbling across this video looking up stuff about the USS Fitzgerald, I'm a former second class petty officer, that's an E5, in the US Navy, a former sonar technician, so I was formerly STG-2, on board USS Lassen, and before that USS Kurtz, which are DDG-82 and FFG-38 respectively. And I served five years in the Navy, got out and I'm currently going to school to get my degree. We're gonna be starting from the first article and working our way to the most recent article at the time it's recording. So, USS Fitzgerald involved in collision. USS Fitzgerald DG-62 was involved in a collision with a merchant vessel at approximately 2.30 a.m. local time, June 17, 2017, while operating about 56 nautical miles southwest of Yokosuka, Japan. As of this time, there have been two patients requiring medical evacuation. One was Commander Bryce Benson, Fitzgerald's commanding officer, who was transferred to U.S. Naval Hospital Yokosuka and is reportedly in stable condition. A second medevac is in progress. Other injured are being assessed. There are seven sailors unaccounted for. The ship and the Japanese Coast Guard continues to search for them. Although Fitzgerald is under her own power, USS Dewey, DDG-105, got underway this morning as well as several U.S. Navy aircraft and will join Japanese Coast Guard and Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force helicopters, ships, and aircraft to render whatever assistance may be required. U.S. and Japanese support from the Navy, Maritime Self-Defense Force, and Coast Guard are in the area to ensure that the sailors of USS Fitzgerald have the resources they need to stabilize their ship. As more information is learned, we will be sure to share it with you and with the Fitzgerald families and, when appropriate, the public. Thank you for your well wishes and messages of concern. All of our thoughts and prayers are with the Fitzgerald crew and their families, as per Admiral John Richardson, Chief of Naval Operations, the highest ranking naval officer in America. Right now we are focused on two things, the safety of the ship and the well-being of the sailors, said Admiral Scott Swift, commander of U.S. Pacific Fleet. We thank our Japanese partners for their assistance. And that is the first article. Now, going to a more updated article, USS Fitzgerald returns to Yokosuka. USS Fitzgerald, DDG-62, aided by tugboats, returned to Yokosuka at 6.15 p.m. this evening. Uh, that's Japanese Standard Time, by the way. Approximately 16 hours earlier, it was involved in a collision with the Philippine flag merchant vessel ACX Crystal while operating about 56 nautical miles southwest of Yokosuka, Japan. Seven of Fitzgerald's crew remain missing. Vice Admiral Joseph P. Okoin, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, uh, commanded U.S. 7th Fleet, along with many family members, were on the pier when the ship arrived. This has been a difficult day, Aquin said. I'm humbled by the bravery and tenacity of the Fitzgerald crew. Now that the ship is in Yokosuka, I ask that you help the families by maintaining their privacy as we continue the search for our shipmates. I want to highlight the extraordinary courage of the Fitzgerald sail sailors who contained the flooding, stabilized the ship, and sailed her back to Yokosuka despite the exceptionally trying circumstances, said Rear Admiral Charles Williams, Commander Task Force 70. Shortly after the collision, the U.S. made a request for support from the Japanese Coast Guard, which was the first on scene and continues to be lead for search and rescue efforts. The Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force ships JS Onami, JS Hamagiri, and JS Enshu were sent to join the JCG ships Izanami and Kano. USS Dewey DDG-105 served as an escort for Fitzgerald and has also returned to Yokosuka. A US P-8 Poseidon aircraft is working in concert with two JMSDF helicopters and a JMSDF P-3 Orion aircraft to search the area. Names of the missing sailors are being withheld until the families have been notified. The collision affected Fitzgerald's forward starboard side above and beyond the waterline, or below the waterline, sorry. 
causing significant damage and associated flooding to two birthing spaces, a machinery space and the radio room, which damage control teams quickly began dewatering. Though the ship is back in Yokosuka, it remains uncertain as to how long it will take to gain access to the spaces in order to methodically continue the search for the missing. Once the ship arrived in Yokosuka, divers began inspecting the damage and developing a plan for repairs and inspection of the spaces. Three patients required medical evacuation from the ship. One was Commander Bryce Benson, Fitzgerald's commanding officer, who was transferred to U.S. Naval Hospital Yokosuka by a JMSDF helicopter. All three sailors are awake and will remain under observation at the hospital until further notice. All injured are being assessed. Now we're going to move on to a more recent article. This, these are the notes from the uh, press conference held about the collision for uh, Vice Admiral Aukoin. The following are U.S. 7th Fleet Commander Vice Admiral Joseph Aukoin's prepared remarks for a press conference held June 18th at Command Fleet Activities Yokosuka, Japan, about the collision of USS Fitzgerald DG-62 with a merchant vessel on June 17th. Thanks for coming today. USS Fitzgerald experienced extensive damage and flooding after a collision with the Filipino container ship at 0220 local time, 17 June, approximately 56 nautical miles off the coast of Honshu, Japan. The damage included a significant impact under the ship's pilot house on the starboard side and a large puncture below the ship's waterline, opening the hull to the sea. The ship suffered severe damage, rapidly flooding three large compartments that included one machinery room and two berthing areas for 116 crew. The commanding officer's cabin was also directly hit, trapping the CO inside. The crew's response was swift and effective, and I want to point out, as we stand by the ship, how proud I am of them. Heroic efforts prevented the flooding from catastroph uh, catastrophically spreading, which could have caused the ship to flounder or sink. It could have been much worse. The crew navigated the ship into one of the busiest ports in the world with the magnetic compass and backup navigation equipment. One of two shafts were locked. Because of the tireless damage control efforts of a resolute and courageous team, the ship was able to make its way back to port safely on its own power last evening. The Fitzgerald crew responded professionally as all sailors are expected to fight the damage uh, sustained to their ship. They are known as the Fighting Fits, and the crew lived up to that name. We owe it to our families and the Navy to understand what happened. Under my authority, I am in initiating a JAGMAN investigation into this collision. I will appoint a flag officer that is 070809, it has to be at least admiral level, as flag officer, to lead that investigation. There will also be a safety investigation. The U.S. Coast Guard is to take the lead on the, on the marine casualty investigation. We recognize that there are other organizations who have uh, equities in this incident, and we expect that they will conduct their own separate investigations. More information on any further investigations will be forthcoming. I will not speculate on how long these investigations will last. As you are aware, we have found the, re the remains of a number of our missing shipmates. Our deepest sympathies are with the families of these sailors. Out of concern for the families and the notification process, I will decline to state how many we have found at this time. We owe that to the families and friends of these shipmates and hope you can respect this process. We will update you after all notifications have been made. We have transferred remains to Naval Hospital Yokosuka. The families are being notified and will be provided the support they need at this difficult time. Please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Their loved ones are what make this Navy great, so this loss is something we all do feel. The names of the deceased will be released soon. Unfortunately, we do not have the details regarding the conditions during their final moments, but hope that the investigation may shed some light on that matter. At the same time, I want to express my most heartfelt appreciation for, to our Japanese allies for their swift support and assistance. Japanese Coast Guard ships and helicopters were the first on scene in our first medevac, the ship's commanding officer, Commander Bryce Benson was accomplished thanks to a JMSDF helicopter. A second medevac was performed for two sailors with minor injuries. All three patients are alert and under observation at Naval Hospital Yokosuka. We set up a USS Fitzgerald Emergency Family Assistance Center within hours and disseminated the phone numbers to their hotlines through social media and Navy websites. This support center will remain open for chaplain and counselor care indefinitely 24-7 on the Fleet and Family Support Center's fourth floor. But to be clear, my sole focus has shifted to helping the grieving family, crew, and friends of the Fitzgerald. The Navy family comes together during a tragedy. I want to thank the entire Yokosuka community rallying their support in these difficult days. Fellow sailors, family members, and civilian members of the Navy team were all out there last night to welcome Fitzgerald home and provide the crew and grieving families with food, blankets, clothes, and emotional support. MWR, Poor Ops, Nex, the, the, the NEX, USO, Chief Pay Officer Mess, and many others pulled together to help out. I ask all of you to keep the affected families in your thoughts and prayers and respect their privacy as we work to get them 
the answers they deserve regarding their loved ones. This is the most recent article about it as at the time of this recording, this is where they release the names of the deceased and I apologize if I get these names wrong as far as mispronouncing and such, but I do want to read them off here in this video. So USS, or US Navy identifies seven deceased Fitzgerald sailors. The remains of seven sailors previously reported missing were located in, in flooded birthing compartments after divers gained access to the spaces on June 18th that were damaged when USS Fitzgerald was involved in a collision with the Philippine flagged merchant vessel ACX Crystal. And the deceased are Gunner's Mate Seaman Dakota Kyle Rigsby, 19, from Palmyra, Virginia. Yeoman Third Class Shingo Alexander Douglas, 25, from San Diego, California. Sonar Technician, Third Class Ngak T. Chung Hyung, I think is how you pronounce his name, uh, 25, from Oakville, Connecticut. Gunner's Mate Second Class Noah Hernandez, 26, from uh, Westlaco, Texas. Fire Controlman Second Class Carlos Victor Gonzon Sibion, uh, 23, from Chula Vista, California. Personnel Specialist First Class Xavier Alec Martin, 24, from Halthorpe, Maryland. Fire Controlman First Class Gary Lee Reem Jr., 37, from Elyra, Ohio. Now that we've read the articles, let's get into my own personal thoughts about this. And honestly, this is probably one of the hardest videos I've ever had to make. This hits especially close to home because where the uh, the ship was struck, where the Fitz was struck, was the same exact berthing that I would have been in on, on board Lassen. So had Lassen been struck instead of the Fitz, that would have affected my berthing as well. And everybody involved, all the rates and stuff, were the same rates. I mean, hell, there was a sonar tech that was part of the... Uh, the seven and it just it hits especially close to home for me so to see these kinds of tragedies happen it hits a little too close to home for me because the Fitz was always like a sister ship to the Lassen which is the one I was on and we would always go and do exercises and stuff together along with other destroyers like the McCampbell, the Mustin, uh, every once in a while, the McCain, Steedham, those were our sister ships. And to see one of our sister ships affected by this, and this, I mean, this wasn't out in the Philippines or anything like that. This was, what, 56 nautical miles close to Japan? They were probably getting ready to pull into port in like a day or two. And then they got struck by, by a merchant vessel. But I do want to commend those who snapped at the ready for damage control efforts because you know also keep in mind this happened at what 2 30 in the morning late at night now granted there are watch standers manning proper watch stations so it's not like the ship's running completely ghost but the majority of the crew is sleeping unless you're on watch and to have them snap at the ready from a dead sleep to damage control efforts to getting out of the spaces it just speaks volumes to the outstanding professionalism of the crew. And I also want to highly, highly encourage those involved, both crew and families, to immediately seek mental counseling. I don't care how strong you are, you have to go and seek mental counseling because stuff like this will, you know, it will bubble up eventually in some form and you need to seek counseling to take care of yourself and to take care of others. I really hope that you guys can get the help that you need, both mentally, financially, through donations. Speaking of donations, I got some updated information involving donations to the FIT, so I'll also be le leaving uh, links in the description, again, to uh, different official sources on how you can donate and help out the USS Fitzgerald crew and I'll be sure to do my part as well. And I encourage everybody, civilians, veterans, fellow service members, or families of such, to donate if you can to this cause because USS Fitzgerald needs us now more than ever. I'll be doing my part and I hope to uh, see others in the community do their part as well. Anyway, with that said, be seeing y'all next time for more updates as the situation 
continues to unfold as we get more info on the events that happened through this investigation. I'll be sure to keep you guys posted on that. But for now, that's the end of the video. So we'll see you next time. Bye guys.